guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is Friday, July the 6th, and it's late in the afternoon and I'm hungry. So we're going to make some uh, Creole jambalaya. Now the difference in Creole jambalaya and Cajun jambalaya, um, Creole comes from Spanish and French um, cuisine. And uh, the, the Creole jambalaya has tomatoes in it, which I like. Now the Cajun jambalaya, they don't put the tomatoes in it, but they will um, get the, the vegetables, you know, the onion and garlic and, and celery and, and bell peppers real brown, and then those, those scrapings at the bottom of it, they'll add water to that and it makes like a brown uh, sauce type, and that's, that's the way the Cajuns make it. But I'm going to show you the ingredients. Um, I have my Trinity in here, which is, uh, I have two bell peppers, two onions, and four stalks of celery, all diced very thin. And then um, this is the poke, the garlic. I'll put that in in a minute. And to this I'm going to add a half a package of um, sliced sausage. Now the sausage I'm using is Hillshire Farms smoked sausage. Um, it is only a 14 ounce package, so I can't say I'm using a half a pan, I'm using seven ounces. Now, if I was cooking for a family, you know, three or four, I would use the whole package, but it's just me, so. Um, and also, um, I bought a whole chicken and I cut it in half and boiled half of it, and then I deboned it. Uh, the reason I cut it in half is because it was so big you know, back in the 70s and 80s, you used to be able to buy a chicken that was three pounds. But now the chickens are almost like a turkey. So I decided to cut it in half, so I still have about two and a half pounds of chicken. Um, now out of the chicken, I got this delicious uh, broth. And this is three cups. I did measure it. Now when I cooked the chicken, I did add um, salt and pepper and a bay leaf so that... Um, you know, the broth would have some seasoning to it also. Okay, so this is getting kind of um, translucent. So we're going to go ahead and um, add the poke. This is six little garlic cloves. So let's just stir this up. I'll turn the fire up just a little bit. Okay, so now you can use uh, shrimp or andouille sausage or pork, you know, whatever you want in here. Um, and when the kids were growing up and we could get sh fresh shrimp back then for about 99 cents a pound, of course I made shrimp jambalaya, but um, we love it with the chicken. What I like so much about having the chicken in it is the broth. Uh, you don't ever, ever throw out chicken broth. Um, one day when I was at Jill's, we had boiled a chicken. I, I think I was going to make dumplings or something. And, of course, when it got done, she just took the pot and, and emptied the broth out. Lord, I, I like to have a heart attack. I screamed at her. I said, no, don't throw out the broth. It's a sin to throw away broth. <laughs> that should be the 11th commandment. Thou shalt not throw away chicken broth. <laughs> So um, let's go ahead and put the sausage in here and let it brown a little bit. Now, um, to all of this, we're going to add uh, one can of uh, diced tomatoes. And I'm going to leave the juice in it. You can drain the juice if you want to. And um, two bay leaves. I can go ahead and throw those in now. And I'm going to add some of my uh, Tony Chasseries Creole seasoning. I'll wait and put these seasonings in after I add the chicken. And the Lee and Perron's um, Worcestershire sauce. And I bought some Mrs. Dash uh, salt-free blend because I'm trying to cut back on my salt intake. Although I'm going to add salt to it, but just not as much. And then black pepper. And, of course, McElhenney Tabasco sauce. <laughs> um, so let's get this stirred up. If 
Yeah, when we lived in Louisiana and the kids were little, um, we decided to take them to Avery Island, and that's where um, McElhenney produces the um, the Tabasco sauce, and it's. It's located on a salt dome, and it's called Avery Island. Um, the Mr. McElhenney had married a woman whose name was her last name was Avery, so they named the island um, Avery Island, and uh, that's where they Mr. McElhenney back in about 1850. Uh, he had gotten some peppers from um, a friend of his who was a plantation owner. I don't remember his name. And uh, he started growing the peppers there. And uh, the good thing about it being on a salt dome is um, the brine that they they soak the peppers in for three years is made from salt and vinegar. But now they don't um, grow the peppers on Avery Island anymore. Um, they they only grow enough for the seed stock, and then uh, the seed stock is shipped to Central and South America, and that's where the peppers are grown. And um, the peppers are picked by hand, still, because um, the pickers have a little red stick. It's called the Petite um, Baton Rouge, which is a, a little red stick. And uh, the pepper has to be the same color of the Petite Baton Rouge uh, before they can pick it. So that's how they determine when the peppers are just right to be picked. And then the peppers are shipped back to Avery Island, and that's where... Um, they have about 200 workers there year-round, and that's where they make the brine. And um, I believe they age the peppers for three years in, in whiskey barrels now that uh, that they buy from um, leftover whiskey barrels from the Jack Daniels distillery. So y'all can just read about it, you know, Google it and, and look it up. If you love history like I do, you'll love learning about it. <laughs> so... Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the burner on underneath my broth and get it ready because we're going to add the um, the Trinity, the Pope, and the sausage to the broth. And then to the broth, to that mixture, we'll be adding one cup of white uncooked rice. And then it will just cook for about a half hour and, um, and then that's our jambalaya. You don't really have to get your vegetables and your sausage and your chicken uh, brown. That's not necessary. Okay, let's go ahead and add um, the, um, I'm just going to add the tomatoes, but I think I better let the garlic cook just a minute longer. But I can go ahead and add the seasonings. Like I said, this is not a how-to recipe, so I'm not measuring anything. I just I just add it and then taste it later and if it doesn't have enough salt or paper pepper, I'll just add that later. Most well seasoned cooks, I think, cook the same way. Okay, let's add some of the Mrs. Dash. This smells good. I don't know what's in it. And then we'll add the black pepper. Anyway, at that Avery Island, um, the Bird City, of course, there's millions of birds there. All different kinds of species. And I guess Mr. McElhenney must have been um, Buddhist because there's a, a Buddha, Buddha temple there. So we were walking up to the temple, and um, Jeremy was always a little precocious boy, he, and he was always um, getting into trouble and everything. Well, he was running up ahead of us, and all of a sudden he stopped and just darted back to me. And, y'all, there was a coral snake crossing the sidewalk there in front of that boy. Oh, Lord, it scared us all to death. So we never made it to the Buddhist temple. <laughs> Too scared for that. Here, y'all, take a look at this. Don't it look good? 
It's getting nice and brown and tender. Let that garlic cook just a minute longer, then we'll add the tomatoes to it. Oh, I love Louisiana cooking. That's, that's what I miss the most about living there. The cooking and the music and the people. I don't miss the hot weather. I was just wondering if any of y'all have ever gone down to Mardi Gras or, or taken a vacation in, to New Orleans. If you want to leave me a message and let me know what you think about the city. Did you have a good experience there? You know, Hurricane Katrina nearly dis or did destroy it, but um, it's coming back. It's coming back, and that's a good thing. Okay, I'm 